All right, so now I'm going to start like a little camera move. I kind of want it to go like this. So I'm going to set my first part of my view, which is right here. And I'm going to create a camera. So I'm going to go to view, create camera from view. My name is Rencam. Rencam one, right? So this is my render camera. I'm going to select this right here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say. Yeah, select this so I know that I'm in my camera. And I'm going to now press the letter S to set a keyframe. So it's setting my position. Then I'm going to go to, let's say, about 24. And actually, let's just do, let's do two seconds. So let's do 48. All right. And so I'll go over here. This is like my end frame. And I'll click on S, all right? So look what's happening. It's going from that to that. But instead, I don't like this little dip in right here. Well, this little uh, kind of going in. So, oh yeah, and also I want to do this, put on film gate too. So I want to pull it out. Because I want this whole thing to be visible, right? And then the way I look at it is I want this top to be just as much space here. That's just for this, you know, certain projects you don't need to be even, but certain things, but I want it to be like that. So I'm gonna press S again. So I'm going from this to that, to this, all right? And also with this as well. So I'll move this out and I'll, was this like another camera? I'll just press H on that camera. So I have this and set it up. So I like this. I'll press S to overwrite that keyframe. There's my second one. And then there's the last one. But this one, I want it to be kind of like the same thing. S to see what we got. Feels like it hits a bump right there. That's the only thing I don't like. And if I put it right here and I delete this keyframe, let's see what it looks like. So maybe I'll pull out a little bit here. Pull out subtly. Okay, so that's a little better. And if I want to stretch this out, make it a little slower, I just select everything. And let's just take it to like 72 or around there. So now that little hiccup that we saw before isn't really there. All right, cool. So now all I gotta do is take this right here. I see this one's, this number's moving. So I just put in 72. Send five, just do it. I didn't know if it hit on 72 or 72.5. If you can't tell, you just need to click on, where's it at? This little thing right here. Oh, so look, it did 72. Point forty seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do copy keyframe and I'm just going to put it on 75 and then I'll put uh, paste. Didn't do it. Paste and connect. Let me try that again. So select this, right click, copy, paste. Nothing to paste from.
also what I can do is I can middle mouse button click. And I mean, uh, shift. So you hold down shift, you left click, drag over the keyframe, and then you can drag it. Only thing is it's like in like this, this uh, floating number, which means it has a decimal on the end. So it's not exactly a number. And that's where I'm trying to like not do that. Ooh, control Z. What did I do? 75, okay. But if I right click and I go to copy and then I go over here and I click on paste. Oh, that's weird. So it's always gonna paste it on this. Uh... Yeah, so that was, when I said it, I, I just kind of put it there because now it's always gonna give me a number with the floating number, 0.47. Yeah, so. so I'll just like this and delete. Yeah, I'll just keep it there, whatever. And then we'll just, so since it's on, um, 72 we could just render it out at 73 so if we put 73 you know wouldn't know the difference okay cool now i want to do a little something to this so i want to select this and i have my spheres right here so this is my big band and we have our spheres and i'm going to put this inside of this big band right so my spheres are inside of here, then my big band. Now, if I click on my big band and click rotate, you can get some like little rotations. And so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna click S and then I'm gonna go all the way over here. I'm just gonna Click. Actually, instead of doing 73, I'm going to go to 83, right? And the reason why is I want it to continue to kind of roll in. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, if I press play, oh, I didn't, I thought I rotated it. I didn't rotate it. So I'll do this again. Click right here, click S. And I'll put it to right here and click S. Now it really stops at 73. But when it, it'll just basically won't just abruptly stop, which is good. And another thing we can do is, which don't really suggest too much, but if we do negative 10, right? And I take this and I just put this to, I don't know, negative five or something, or even negative 10, it'll already be spinning by the time I get to one. So I'll do that to that. And then for this one, I'll do something similar. So let me do negative five. So that one's rotating uh, counterclockwise. This one will be clockwise. And I'll do it faster too. So this one, um, I'll click S. And then let's do 83. So I'll spin it. like three times. So now, let 
Now I can take this group of cylinders or tubes. Now let's do cylinders. And let me get out of my camera. So perspective. And for this, do a little something different. I'm going to press D for the pivot and I'm gonna put the pivot right on the top. Let me do a four just so I can see this. Yeah, it works. So So I'm gonna do this with this. I'm gonna click uh, S. Then I'm gonna put it on 10. Move this, ooh, move this down a little bit. 25. Up a little bit. And I'll just do like a little weird kind of scaling up and down type of thing. Take this grid, maybe move it down just a little bit, just to and then with this ring right here, I'll do something similar. Click S, go to 15, and right here, S. Bring it in. It doesn't have to be like even timing. We're just gonna do something that looks kind of just wild. I actually have a quick question. Is there a way to remove one of the timestamps um, without doing like Z, like backspace? Oh, yeah. So like, let's say this one right here. I don't want this. What I like to do is go to this tab right here. And then what you can do is you can right click and then you can go to delete. And then it'll delete that keyframe. Okay, thank you. And then, so this is one way you can do it. And also like, let's say I like this, but I don't want it to, uh, I don't like this keyframe to work in Y or something. I can just right click and go to, um, which one is it? Break connections. And now this one, but it completely disabled that, right? So that means it won't move up in Y at all, right? And this is for the whole uh, thing. So it just didn't delete that keyframe. It deleted the, uh, the entire Y animation in general. But like if I wanted to delete this keyframe just right here, well, yeah, you'd have to just right click and press delete. But if I wanted to completely disable like everything here, then I could just right click and go break connection, or I can do it over here, break connection. But that means that for all the keyframes selected, this just excludes whatever it is. You could exclude two at a time if you wanted to, you know? So um, that's up to you. Okay, so we have a render cam. This is what's happening. All right, cool. And then also, if I really wanted to, I can go um, do one of these things, perspective. I can take like this sphere, D, I mean W, to move it. And I can find out where, and this is one of those things where you wanna get in here, pull down D, pull this all the way down. Then I can go on my camera and I can press S right now and then go right here and press R 
I'll scale it down. S. Scale it up. So this is just another like layer of complexity we could have. And I could do that for the other spheres as well, you know? So I'll just do that to one more and then I'll go into like some quick lighting. Space bar, space bar, D. Pull it all the way down to the bottom. Space bar, space bar. S. 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 Okay, so we have a cool little thing going on right here. 